You are tuned in to The Tea Side, a podcast where we talk total health, life lessons, and music. I'm your host, licensed therapist, doula, and music enthusiast, Tanya D. Now let's get into it. Today, I have back one of everybody's favorite guests, my brother, DeMarco. Hello, everyone. Great to be back. Everybody's been trying to get you to come back since... The I guess you were the first guest I had on the second episode. Alarm yeah, music. Honor. And again, I'm just excited to see all your growth and see uh, how you've been dealing and overcoming every challenge uh, with uh, not just the technology, but even within yourself. So I'm proud of you as always. Oh, thank you. Today, oh boy, it's going to be a fun one. We are going to be talking about my mama and what my mama said. I was going to use the title Mama used to say, because that's the song that keeps popping in my head, the song by Junior. Mama oh, used to say. I love that song. <laughs> Mama used to say. Yes. Yes. Except it's not things she used to say. These are things that she still says. And to me, honestly, they're just hilarious. I call them Sharonism because who else would even think of the things that she says? Sometimes you can be mad and she could be really pissed. But the thing she says, just you can't do anything but laugh. So I figured I'd share some of those with you. And I couldn't share those without having my brother on to talk about them with me. Some he's heard, some probably not. There's one favorite one that I'll just mention last because honestly, I really feel like that should be on the shirt. And one day I probably will make it. But I've been keeping a list of things that she has said over the years and since I'm quite a bit older than he is I've heard a lot of these in different fashions depends on who she's talking about sometimes she could just be upset talking about somebody sometimes it's when she was talking to me or my brother's friends Um, sometimes it's one particular one when she was talking about my daddy you know, the thing with mama is like, you know, I always look at her kind of like a mix between uh, Ned Flanders and Red Fox. Uh, yeah, you know, she's a comedian. You know, yeah, like, you know, and I and, mean, and once, like, one, she's the type of person that when you try to be serious with her, like, she starts laughing, which makes you more, even more mad. Oh, um, that burns me it. up. It burns me up, right? But I do the same thing. And people behave, I was going to say, too. <laughs> you do it all the time. I know, because I, I, I get it from my mama. So, uh, <laughs> so with that being said, like, you know, I recognize that mama grew up, you know, in, in the time of, of political correctness, uh, uh, respectability politics, uh, grew up in Cape Girardeau, where she didn't really endure racism for real, not according to her, uh, but she still was born in the Pruitt Igo and still got family I, here in St. Louis. I think she, mom's the type, she's more oblivious to it. In Cape mm-hmm. Girardeau, she went to school with Rusty Limbaugh. There was racism. She went to school with Rush Limbaugh. Did she? Yeah, he's in her yearbook. You haven't seen that? Oh, no. So, Don't say that out loud. Don't. So yeah. clearly, there was some racism. It was oh, kind yeah, of I'm green. I'm green. Yeah. But I think she's always been oblivious to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So yeah. she's just well, like, she's, whatever. She's so keen on a lot of things, too, though. You know, so. She yeah, is. She's definitely oblivious, but she's definitely keen and can pick up on a lot of stuff, too. So. Yeah, because she's where from that, the hood. That combination of, you know, maybe she, maybe <laughs> she's the original bougie person. You know, like she bougie, but ghetto at the same time. Yeah. You know. That she is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because she's from the PJs. It, so the first one is, I'm not even sure where I, the context that she said this in, but she would be like, mm, he think he hot shit, don't he? Oh, okay. we crushing on this episode. Right on. Okay. So <laughs> we talking about your mama, yeah. Right, right. So she, what, why would she say that? Who would she be? Yeah, that's with? what I'm saying. I'm trying to think, because you know she used to be at the club all the time, and if oh, she's yeah. talking to her friends and whoever, mm. and somebody think they doing something, they think they all that, and he really a raggedy piece of something. She's mm. like, mm, he think he hot shit, don't he? Nah. <laughs> Just okay. So again, like, so again, like my mom, like just let people know, like my mom was married to my dad for 19 years. And I don't know what type of marriage they really had. Uh, a time I was born, like they barely talked to each other, at least not in pleasantries. But my mom, you know, got divorced and she had, she really said she decided to live her life. 
And I, as a kid, you know, I was excited because I could be at home alone. I'll have friends come over, so I didn't really care. My mom would go out clubbing. She'd be kicking it. And she was out She out there living a hot girl life before it was hot girl summer. She was living it. Um, and She was she, doing that before. Walk, yeah, walk her and a group, come into the club like, uh, what was the group? Men all, pa- like you say, men all, pause. Who was that? <laughs> Climax. Climax, yeah, like they were Climax, right? You know, I used to call them pimp player hustler and they used to get all the free drinks from the men, you know? and Always. Uh, always. So, I mean, that was back in the day, you know, and, and she was kicking it. So if somebody thought that was hot shit, they probably won't. They probably weren't. They were just getting them free drinks out them, out them tricks. So. And you know what? That's something else she used to say. Never turn down a free drink. I don't oh, that's know. That's bad people. advice. I know, Listen, right? People. Listen, people, please turn down free drinks. Please. That's not. Okay. No See, this was before drink. people were drugging people all the time with the drinks. You know, I've heard of people doing things, but please, there's no such thing as a free drink. Well, but then, okay. it, but then she also knew the bar owners as well. That's another thing. She was right. Cool. Was yeah, because she she was a regular. She was a regular. She was a regular. Right. Now, this one always made me laugh. I don't care how pissed she was. And this one is something that she used to say, and it would make her so much more upset <laughs> because I would just start laughing. And she's like, you better scratch your ass and get glad. <laughs> what? what exactly <laughs> what great grandma from arkansas mississippi did she get that from i have no idea i have no idea where she got half of these things from so yeah like i said a lot of them you have to stop and think what is she really saying like if you want something kind of like people in hell want ice water or or somebody say have coca smile and shut up like yeah she like you better scratch, scratch your ass, ass <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad visual that's nothing like all these sayings right. are really bad visuals because that's why it was always so funny because i would <laughs> picture it and as a child it was hilarious i got to my ass <laughs> oh they don't even make sense like, <laughs> i don't want to see anybody getting happy while scratching their ass like like maybe it's just an irritable itch that you couldn't reach or something. i don't know i don't know and you oh, know, no. have you ever heard her say any? I've never heard her say that. Oh wow! Oh no, she that must. I, I can picture her saying that with a with a cigarette in her hand too. Like that's mm-hmm. that sounds like something that after one or two drinks of something brown, some brown. Yeah, that, that's some brown liquor. Uh huh. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Right. A Canadian Mist is what she would drink. Yeah, Canadian at the mist. time. That's not yeah. even a hardcore gangster drink either. Like it's it's got the word <laughs> mist in it. In Canada, like nothing, <laughs> nothing is gangster about that drink, but somehow it will bring out the gangsterest of the of, of Sharon, the most gangster ever. Maybe it was a combination of that and the Salem Ultra Light 100s. I don't know. Man, yeah, amazing the mm-hmm. things you remember when you little. Because I used to have right. to go to the store and buy the cigarettes. Right, but Back everybody at the table. When when the uh, when they would let a kid hop out the car and go purchase cigarettes. Yep. You know. Except I was close to the store, so I could just go across the street. Oh yeah. Well, again, we were regulars. They knew us, so. Yep. I no, get more menthol for mm-hmm. Joe, Virginia Slim one hundred for Aunt Gloria, and Salem Ultra Light one hundred for Mama. Mama was on them Virginia Slims for a minute though. Was for she? Yeah. Probably because she was with Aunt Gloria. Look. She, right. Her crew, but mm-hmm. this one I find that I say often. Uh oh. Like that would be too much like right. Mm. Like if I'm talking to my coworkers and it's like if somebody does something and they're like, Well, why would they do that? Well, wouldn't it just make sense to do that? Well, as my mama would say, that would just be too much like right. Mm-hmm. Have you heard her say that one? Uh I probably She's, have. I she probably says have. it so often, and it's just because it's not really extra like the other ones, right? It just kind of flows in conversation. Mm-hmm. She says it all the time. And, you know, that's one of the things as I get older, I find that I say all the time. And here's the one that I find myself saying all the time as I get older. Honey, where you trying to go? I already been. I hate yeah. when she said that. Have yeah. you ever heard her say that one? I think I have. Again, but like, again, these were sayings were not during positive times. So. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. She was saying that she would say that one to our friends. Yeah, she would. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because again, like, you know, so one, like we weren't like really conniving, sneaky children either. You we know? didn't have to be because yeah, we, we, right? <laughs> right, we didn't have to be. Right, we didn't have to. We wanted to like, do. 
we were the party house. Like we were the ones that's like, right. hey, we went on drinking. Y'all give me your keys. You no, know, nope. Uh, and you've had enough, right? I mean, so you no, know, she didn't encourage underage drinking, but you know, it was a, it was a more of a cultural norm. Uh, like in, in like in Italy, where kids have wine at dinner. Like it was more of a mm-hmm. cultural norm, right? So it wasn't it was we weren't getting drunk, or filthy, nothing like that. But she just look out for us and look out for other people's kids because uh, mm-hmm. she still had a village mentality. And with that village mentality came that village correction of 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 our friends <laughs> thinking that they go do something <laughs> and yeah. are thinking they could get away with stuff because they wasn't at home anymore. And my mom like, nah, I already peep your game. I already see what you're doing. Right. You know? And so that's why you. Say, like, yeah, she would say like, yeah, honey, where are you trying to go? I've already been. You know, been like done that. You like know? you said, she was really keen. She's oblivious, but she's still really keen on things. Mm-hmm. So technically, she's seen it all. She's done it all. Right. So and she's. I mean, she's. And you know, I think another thing that about our mama and many other mothers, especially black mothers, uh, those who have survived some really uh, turbulent times are seeing the the downfall of the black community or seeing the, the, the tough times that uh, families have endured. You know, this the mm-hmm. black mothers are, are the, to me, the original griots. They're the ones who maintain the stories uh, and they rec- they keep the, they, they, the, 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 the spoken word record keeping history of, of mm-hmm. our people. Uh, happens that way is, is usually passed down through you know those who are able to tell those stories uh, and black mothers are normally those ones who grew up from being black little girls and seeing observing the world around them and mm-hmm. how it's impacting and affecting everybody so you know so you can see how how certain other people's downfalls would be a learning lesson for others yeah, yeah. and and along with that when she says this one to me now all the time she'd be like just keep living oh yeah Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's like oh, as I get older and I find certain things happening to me as somebody aging, she'd be like, "Honey, just keep living." Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Thanks. Right. That's, that's usually not met with yeah, that's, that's not a positive <laughs> <laughs> loving statement either. Uh, but it's like, you know, just dealing just again, just endure, you know, survive, exist, you know, and that's one thing I take uh, from that, um, you know, I, I remember when everything happened in Ferguson um, in 2014, I definitely was on some Tupac ready to die, uh, ready to like, go out in the blaze of glory, you know, uh, but my pastor, you know, was like survival is also part of resistance. Uh, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. no, more, like, we don't need you going out like that. But then having a, a Sharonism, just keep living. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's a challenge is to survive. It's to, it, it takes on a different meaning. Definitely. Totally different meaning, or in a in a better in a better light, right? Because again, it's it makes you stop and think. It's such a simple statement. Just keep living. Mm-hmm. But then you think like, oh, if I keep living, well, that means I gotta keep living. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, well, I, that's what I gotta do. Right, right. Even if you don't know what to expect, just keep living, and you find out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reminds me of uh, Dory from uh, Finding Nemo. Keep swimming. Keep swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, being goofy. <laughs> that's why we love you. That's yep. why everybody loves Marco. Nah, that's um, one of the reasons. <laughs> so is there anything else that you find that she would say? Like I said, I always find that now as I get older and talk to younger people, I always say, were you trying to go I already been? I don't say it verbatim necessarily, right. but I do find myself saying that one. And I'm like, oh God, I sound just like my mama. Yeah, no, I definitely say that. I say that a lot, especially to uh, my mentees, uh, to, especially to the young men that I've mentored. Um, I let them know, like, yo, I, I literally, and that's another great thing about, you know, just being a child of Sharon or even being, or even being someone who, uh, who, call my, who call our mom, mom. Um, like we were, li- we literally was able to experience having a life and being able to make mistakes. And I just thank God that none of, none of our mistakes, because we, I've made mistakes. I don't know if you've made mistakes, but I know I've definitely made mistakes. Uh, and I just thank God these mistakes have not taken me com- or did not completely derail me or take me out completely. You know, so I thank God for that. Thank mama for that. So we had a chance to learn uh, from our mistakes. 
uh, as well. And uh, those things really played played a part in because of that we we had at least for me I had an amazing while it was still rough while I still growing up around gangs, drugs, family members addicted to drugs, killings and murders, and seeing people get beat up and uh, depression, having suicidal tendencies and all that. Still had an amazing childhood. Uh, and I can share, I share now is that it's the wisdom, right? It's like, hey, yeah, I've I've been able to overcome certain things, but it wasn't because it was just me. It was because of having, and I always tell people a, a loving, praying, praying mother, uh, mm-hmm. a, a loving, corrective sister who thinks she's my mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I so am. I did have a village as well. And with, with a lot of things that these young men. I'm, I'm speaking specifically about, or not even young men, just young people, because I've spoken to young ladies as well. They just want, they do want guidance. They do want somebody to invest yeah. in them. And I think that's one of the great things about certain sayings that stick with people. So I try to share certain things uh, as often as possible. You know, and I find myself saying, like, if this is what you're trying to achieve, I can show you how to achieve it. But I'm also mm-hmm. going to let you know, like, this is what happens, or this is what comes with it. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I think my take, my uh, remix on Mama's uh, "Keep Living" or "Where You Trying to Go," I've already been, mm-hmm. is uh, <clears throat> you no, know, been there, I've done, been there, done that, or like, oh, hey yes. man, like I've already done that. Like I can tell you, you know, what comes from that. So I just have the little quirky sayings of myself that I come up with, and you know, usually be inspired probably by something that she said or something that Daddy said. Yeah, I'm sure the things he said was different, but he had way more curse words than all of his words. So well. Then that brings me to my favorite one. We I promise you. I promise you I'm putting it on a shirt. You want to say it? Go ahead. I know you know it. Why don't you say it? It's your, it's your podcast. Go ahead. <laughs> you know what, DeMarco? You make my asshole chew bubble gum. First off, hold on. Time out. She, she said that to Joe <laughs> Davidson first, all right? <laughs> she said it to you second. Probably. <laughs> but yeah, this one, she would say, and probably she made it up specifically for... Joe Davidson. You make my asshole chew bubble gum. Like that is ridiculous. That is and so- again, it just makes you stop and think, what? So whatever you mad about, you gonna stop and it's gonna make you think and it's gonna make it even funnier because how does oh, yeah. that even work? How does that happen? Uh, one, well, clearly mama helped a lot of tension in her butt for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but ain't no reference, which is not good, <laughs> not healthy. We may need to. I, I'm glad that she decided to get counseling and therapy herself. Um, Did yeah, she? I think I she got a divorce, is what she got. She said it. I feel like I remember the first time she said it. Because uh, that was another thing, right? I'm always about I, one thing I always encourage people or inform young people about is being mindful of who you're around, being mindful of the, of the energy you get from people. Because uh, for some reason, like after my mom, you no, know, after my mom, mom and dad got divorced, my mom was still like working through a lot of things. But whenever my dad would come around, sometimes he would come around for family functions or just come and just hang out and chill uh, with some of our, uh, some of my mom's cousins at our apartment. Uh, he would come and drink and then they would start drinking, smoking, just talking, talking to each other, you know, playing cards perhaps. And for whatever reason, my mom would curse way more when my daddy was around. She would also drink and smoke a little bit more than normal. Um, and you know, she told me once, you know, I didn't start cursing until I got around your daddy. And, yeah. Uh, you have to be around so the maybe that's it too. Like she learned how to start, she learned how to curse, like yeah. in her when she was 19, 20. I, I don't know, I don't know who taught her how to actually curse. I don't know somebody really like set her down and explained to her like, no multiple uses of words. It's just being around the Davidsons, I guess. There ain't no telling what they came up with. They were some very there's a very they're a creative bunch. I mean, just being around them, they bring yeah. out that type of vocabulary. Not that yes. they would say it, but yes, they they bring it out of you. They do. Yeah, right. she she had to hold her own with the Davidsons because they said she was quiet. So, right. and with yeah. the Davidsons, I don't lift up as a, a badge of honor. But at one point in time, I remember feeling like whoever cursed the loudest, whoever talked the loudest, was the winner of the argument, Ugh. or the winner of the debate, or what that made them more right. I don't think that's healthy in any shape, form, or fashion. I think it was very toxic. Uh, I love my family. Uh, but I think that's a very toxic, but then that's me interpreting things as a kid. Me right. And my mama, again, she, she never acted or behaved like that. Uh, so no. she would have never survived around the Davidsons. And I don't know why Davidsons would talk like that. Like our grandmother talked like that. And uh, my great grandmother. Yeah. Right, right. So so that's another thing that I, I find interesting when people say, 
something isn't ladylike or woman like. I'm like, these are the ladies and women I know, and they be, they be talking right. about everything. I He's say I get it everything. honest. I I right. promise I get it honest. I try to watch it, but you know. Right. Megan and Cardi ain't new. Like I remember <laughs> Mom's Mabley album. Like that is ain't nothing new. Right. But back to Sharon. She said this. I don't I don't even know what the conversation was. My daddy was just being a jerk. And she like looked at him dead in the face. She's like, yep. you know what, Joe Davidson? And she like, stop, make my asshole chew bubble gum. <laughs> and again, <laughs> this is the whole thought of a of a of an asshole being so agitated that it just started chewing. <laughs> Just chewing like, oh, like that's just ridiculous. It's a ridiculous visual. <laughs> I don't know why she would say that. And again, and I, mean, I always get a visual. There's no bubble gum in the there was no bubble gum in the room. <laughs> no Wrigley's, no, no big league chew, no hubble bubble in the round in the vicinity of the of the place. Uh, my mama didn't even chew gum. Like, I don't even know. Yes, you <laughs> did. She went with the double the Wrigley double mint. Yep. Yeah, I mean, but that's not bubble gum, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> where did she pull that reference from? Like, I don't even... I think I asked her once, where did you get that from? And she's like, you know what? I don't know. She's like, she like, I don't know. I just, said, I just made it up. Thought of the most irritating thing possible. You know, I was like, good Lord. Like, <laughs> I think daddy might have sobered up. Like, I think he might have sobered up. She said, it. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you just say, sure. Like... I can't take this. I'm not a you got he's not religion for one minute. I don't know. That was but weird. but you know, that's why I said they're Sharonisms. Cause to be honest, nobody else says these things. Where do where do you get them from? And she's like, I don't know. So she just makes them up. But even if it is something like you said, they'll put a remix on it, but it's the way she says it. I'm trying to get her to come on the show. She has not agreed yet. But mm-hmm. just to hear her say them is. Because everybody thinks we should just have our own show anyway, just right. the Davidsons. But another one, she says that I guess if you dragging your feet, you procrastinate and she'd like, you just dinking around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Again, <laughs> dinking? I what say is that plenty of times. You what you say you have? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Because it's you. Right. Because you're a last I'm minute person. Thinking of the family. <laughs> I take whatever to get ready. All that. Or right, when I was sleeping, you didn't know, because I had an I didn't know. Right. Right. But yeah, no, but she definitely is, uh, has some classic sayings, of course, and you know, I would love to hear what everybody, you know, everybody else mama used to say that, that own day mama said as well, like, you know, for those who listen to this and have some place where to, you know, put in some, type in some words or type in some phrases or whatever, I, I want to see how crazy y'all mama sound too. See who can come with the best saying. Matter yeah. of fact, we're gonna come up with the top 10 best unique mama sayings. How about that? And then we're gonna get them get them all on a t-shirt. <laughs> I'll be happy to make a shirt. Yeah. Cause it because it's different than just the, the normal black mama sayings. You know, like it's different than the, the I'll beat the black off of you type stuff or mm-hmm. be in for the street lights. Come on, it's different, right? This is the unique isms of your particular mother, right? So see, I want to hear those. You know, only your mama would say something like that. And even yeah. if it is something that somebody else would say, it's how she says it that makes it unique. Mm-hmm. Because even with the asshole chewing bubble gum, like the part of it is, you know what? <laughs> you make my asshole chew bubble gum. Like it's a question. It was first. always a pause. It's always the that pause. little pause. The pause, right? <laughs> it's a question first, and then it's a statement. It's a declaration. <laughs> a declaration of agitation yes. of how yes. agitated she was. <laughs> so, yeah, please, we need this joy. And, and you know, heck, we need new, new some new sayings in uh, in 2021 as well. You know what? You had mentioned she had a lot of tension in her ass. Here's another <laughs> one she would say. She would say, "I'll snatch a knot in your ass." Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know what that means? I honestly don't know what that means. Like, that's <laughs> it sounds it sounds violent. It, Snatching, exactly. The word snatch is a really violent word anyway. Like, whether or right. it's, it's, a, it's a very strong word. Um. Uh, but to snatch something not- in, like, so snatch is taken out. Like, that's what you, I'm going to snatch a purse, <laughs> snatch something, but then snatch in. Like, that's, I don't even, that's that's physically impossible. And I'm glad it is. But, and then a knot, like, why a knot? I don't, <laughs> that, it's just bad. It's just bad. It's, again, I don't know where she got these from. I'll end it on a fun one that she would say, this one was kind of a rare one that she would say when she got really excited about food and she'd be oh. like, Ooh, it's scrum delicious. 
What? That's See, that's that Mad like- Flanders. That's that Mad Flanders right there. Scrum Dilly Issues. It sounds like something from uh the uh Eureka's Castle or a Lamb Chop or, or something. Nobody said that word in real life. Like <laughs> except Sharon. I don't even know how to spell Scrum Dilly Issues. I've never seen it on paper. I spelled it S-C-R-U-M-D-I-L-I-C-I-O-U-S. Because mm-hmm. it's not delicious, it's delicious. Random. Right. <laughs> right. Ned Flanders. Sharon Flanders. One day she was eating some Oreos and milk. I was little. She don't even eat them anymore, really. But she hadn't had them in a really long time. And she really wanted them. And she had some. And she thought, mm, scrum delicious. She said it to herself. Yeah, kind of like out loud. Like, ooh, it's really good. It hit a spot. <laughs> it is, it, oh, man. That's another <laughs> thing. Like, she's, she's animated. Like, she's like quietly animated. You know, that's another great thing. Yes, she is. Yeah. That's a great way to describe her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she's mm-hmm. always really calm and mild-mannered. She's the type of person that will cuss you out and you won't even know that you got cussed out. She will yeah. read you for filth and you won't really know it. Mm-hmm. But what she says, it always makes you stop and think. Like, just keep living. So mm-hmm. simple. Now, I'll ask you, is there anything that she's ever said that, you thought was like really helpful like uh any advice that she gave you oh i mean so many so many words and so not only was it just her words though it was just her listening you know i think that's another thing so i mean it's, it's and and just asking like you know and she was she that she didn't come off as a therapist or counselor but she was a sounding board um and she would be like i'm gonna listen to you first and i'm gonna hear you out you know, and that was one, always one of the great things uh, I remember. Um, and she would like make sure that she, we would always talk about situations, no matter how heated, and, or if she did get super mad or super angry, she would actually take the time to go and calm down. And like, I'm too angry to talk she, right now. Oh uh, well, that's that was between the two of you. No, oh, yeah, yeah, we didn't have that. But I was uh, but, the uh, one that was always overly accommodating. It was the two of you. I wasn't in the house anymore where you two oh, yeah. always butt heads. Yeah, yeah. Like you it, was more, it was more about something that I'd done versus me getting into it with her. Like, you two would right. butt heads. Like, I wouldn't bump heads with mama. It would be something that I'd be. Right, because you just leave. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't just leave. I mean, no, like, she would. Mm-hmm. No, nah, like, she would, uh, like, it would be something like, I'll tell the story. Uh, I came back and took, um, uh, from a college, she took someone to prom, and the person's mother didn't know that this person that oh, they she was dating. Yeah. And I told her, like, yo, no, like tell your mama, like, or, or I'm taking you home. The person didn't want to tell their mama. I tried to take the person home. Um, because wasn't nothing, wasn't nothing popping. I told mama knew everything, right? Because we would always talk about a lot of stuff. And long story short, the other person's mother ended up calling mom or ended up calling mama, and that she had to like mama had to drive to come get the young lady that was staying with me. And had to take her home. And, I was, and mama was like, I know what this is about. And she was all angry. Like, mama, I promise you, you know, it's not like that. Nothing happened. And she's like, are you sure? It's like, all right, we're going to talk later. You know, she was still upset that she had to be woken up out of her sleep at 2, 3 in the morning. over some mm-hmm. nonsense. Um, but again, but but even then, as a, you know, like I said, as a kid growing up, um, you know, it'd be different times where mama would just sit there and listen, which I don't know how she did it. And half the time she would fall asleep. <laughs> no, but I think it was also just being able to voice the words or hearing myself mm-hmm. say certain things, which allowed me to to articulate my feelings better mm-hmm. than most of most of other people that were my age. Uh, and then just making sure. Oh, so I mean, <laughs> and I, I jokingly say this, but it was one thing that made a difference is when uh, when after mom and dad got divorced and life was going crazy in the in the early nineties, um, uh, and I was having ulcers as a kid um as a, like a third or fourth grader uh that was like you need counseling you need therapy and I was like you know I don't want to go um and my mama I, this is one thing I do remember her saying she was like uh you better go talk to them white women <laughs> I was like I don't want to like, go talk to them white women like I want to go talk to them people right I don't want to go I don't want to do that she's like was well, either that or you ain't playing on your Nintendo like so it necessarily wasn't you know something that that's like it wasn't a, an ism per se 
but she just understood it. Like either you're going to do this, uh, which I, which, which she, she didn't un have a clear, a great understanding of counseling and therapy either. I don't know where she really got that from, to be honest, because black people wouldn't. I, I, okay, I, I, can I just interrupt you because yeah. was it you? No, as oh. a therapist, it really triggered something in me when you said, or when she said, "Go talk to them white women." The fact that that's how it used to be in yes. the stereotype of what you picture as a counselor, an old white woman. Oh, that's just, yeah. that's just a trigger for me because yeah. I've had people say that to me, like, Oh, you're not what I expected. Well, what did you expect? I've had people more yeah. on more than one occasion say an old white lady. I'm like, well, I'm not old and I'm definitely yeah. white. Yeah. So, and they, 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 they I mean, my counselors were white women, like, it, like which so, makes you, yeah, yeah, it makes you not want to go and talk to them because you don't exactly. feel like you can relate. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, and, and, and I will say by one of the great things even about today, and this, and this is why I'm a, a huge, huge advocate for uh, mental and emotional health uh, is because having those experiences in third or fourth grade, talking to a counselor or a therapist uh, that I wouldn't have talked to, uh, because again, I was, a, I was a pissed off, mad, angry, nine, 10 year old little black boy um, again, I, I already listed off all the things I've experienced or were experiencing um, with divorce and murder, all those different things. But I still wanted to be a kid. I still want to mm -hmm. do kid things and not deal with any of those issues, not deal with any of those problems. Uh, and because mama made me go and talk to them white women when I didn't want to, uh, what it did was it got me uh, to a place where I could actually open up even better when I did talk to a black counselor or black therapist. Uh, mm -hmm. So shout out to Mrs. Cameron uh, from Kirby Junior High. Uh, oh I really, yeah. Yeah. That was I your really, girl. I, yeah, that was, hey, much love to her. Uh, and so that made a huge difference uh, in my life. Literally was a turning point. Uh, but if it wasn't for my experiences with them white women, <laughs> with, the, with the counselors <laughs> and therapists, yeah. you know, uh, I wouldn't have had an, as as great of a sessions that I had with Mrs. Cameron. Uh, so that's and and now we do actually have way more, and still not enough. We still don't have enough black therapists and counselors. People people ask me all the time, "Hey, my son needs help. Uh, who, who can I find a black male counselor or a black male therapist?" I have a hard time finding black male counselors and black therapists. Um, I had one this past summer, and I felt like I was counseling him. I'm like, brother, you need a counselor too, brother. Let's talk. You know, like oh it, boy. That was the last session, though, as well. You know, it was the last session. Uh, so, which is not good, right? I, I should, but I'm also, you know, and I'm not a therapist, a counselor. I'm always asking people to talk to my sister, you know, but make sure we pay people. This is their profession. So, I always make sure that I elevate that as often and as much as possible. And again, I, because of Sharon Davidson, again, she was, I don't even know if mama had experienced counseling and therapy yet. No. Uh, but, but she did go and, and seek help. And whenever there is something major or something major or some issue, I mean, she went and got counseling therapy after Daddy was murdered. You know, so did I. You know? She did, you said? Yes. Yep. I don't know. I shut down. I don't know what anybody did with anything. Yeah, I was doing so, good to get up and walk every day. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I just make, you know, so one, uh, talking to somebody is is more like, and listening and being, make sure I'm being heard. Uh, I definitely got that from Sharon. Um, you know, and it, to me, like, a mama's actions is always, you know, uh, was to me, her actions spoke louder than her words and even her crazy little sayings. But we'll just say, say that for another episode. Yeah, she's uh, her love language isn't words. Of words. No, it's it's really it's definitely action. But right. My yeah. mama said some crazy things. She she's off the chain with her sayings, and it's mm -hmm. definitely a comedy show. Just because like people say I'm funny, I don't consider myself funny. Now I consider my brother hilarious because he's a goofball. He's always saying <laughs> something funny. So when she says something, he's going to feed off of that and go way over and beyond. And they're hilarious together. So mm -hmm. I guess I fit in there somewhere. But yeah, you do. Because I think because I'm the straight, I'm the straight man. Mm -hmm. I'm not I mean, I'm, yeah. jokey. I don't, I'm silly, but yeah, when I say it, it's more a deadpan humor. Mm hmm. Yeah, you, I agree. You two I are agree. just goofy. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, growing up with, with Joe, Joe Davidson, you had to have the humor in some shape or more fashion, you know. And, uh, you know, so I think, you know, he definitely, you know, when I think about daddy, I, of course, I always think about mama, too. So that was something about mama and how he uh, really exposed her to so much, so many different things, like abruptly to a certain degree. Like she was living her life in Cape Girardeau, and then she moved to St. Louis. And back in the back in that time, like that was a, a way different uh, yeah. type of living, type of experiences, and uh, especially the things that he was doing. And he, he always taught her how. To, or, I'm sorry, he didn't teach her how to drive per se. She said she had to learn how to drive. Yeah, you know, and, there, and that's what, still why my mom only got like a 10 mile radius. Oh, uh, like, <laughs> you know, GPS. Now she got 20 mile radius, but before that, right. like she ain't driving nowhere more than. 10 oh, miles. that's another one. She say. Got me going out to East Jesus. Where is East oh, yeah. Jesus? Oh, yes. Yes. How could I forget East Jesus? Yes. Because I East actually Jesus. say that one now. So we were in the candle store last year. And she said uh, she said that because I went and picked her up, like you said, uh, to take her to this candle store, which is around the corner from my job. Like we live like maybe 10, 15 minutes, like driving with little traffic, right? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. More like 15, 20 minutes. Anyway, she was. we were checking out. And my mom was talking about how, yeah, I didn't know where we were going. My son got me all the way out here in East Jesus. <laughs> and and the, the lady, she was like, man, what, what, what did you just say, ma'am? Because <laughs> one, we was, one I, think, I think it caught off because we were in the Central West End. But like, oh, my mom yeah. said East Jesus. <laughs> She's like, East Jesus. She's like, I'm, this lady turned like Christmas bowl red. Like, like this, this lady turned red in the face. She was laughing so hard, had tears in her eyes. She said, I ain't never heard of East Jesus. I ain't never heard of that. Where that is that? Again, that doesn't even make sense. Jesus is a whole human person being the savior of salvation and humanity. And she's talking about East of G- East Jesus, not East of Jesus, East Jesus, not East Jerusalem, East Jesus. That don't make sense. Like that, I don't know. Like I, that makes no sense at all. I don't have no idea where she got that from. Me either. Yeah. Again, everything she says, you just have to stop. And it, it makes you think because it doesn't seem like it would fit. But the way she says it, it makes sense. She says it with conviction. I think that's the thing. If nothing else. From Maybe lesson, that's what it is. Say, whatever, whatever you're going to say, say it with conviction. <laughs> whatever you say, like make it sound like say it like it's supposed to be normal. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. Like, I swear that because. I mean, are we out here in East Jesus? Like, that's what? That's not, <laughs> Jesus ain't on the map, mama. It's not on the map. You know, I think that's what it is. We, we've we solved yeah. that riddle. Yeah. She says it with conviction. As mm-hmm. ridiculous as it is, she says it with conviction every single time. Like you said, she'll be like, you know what? You make my asshole chew bubble gum. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's it. Now we've solved that riddle. There you go. Right. And that's a good note to end it on. So, like I said at the beginning, my song was Mama Used to Say by Junior. That's the Mm -hmm. song that immediately came to mind. Is there a song or a mood that you have you want to add? Nah, I love that song anyway. Any parting words? Any final thoughts on your mama and what she said? Just keep away from bubblegum. I don't know. Just keep away. (laughs) (laughs) I got nothing serious to say. Like, just keep her away from bubble gum. Nothing serious to say. That's yeah, funny. just keep away from bubble gum. Well, thank you so much for joining in to help me talk about our mama. Oh, uh, no problem. My pleasure. I can't wait for her to hear this episode. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? For her to not like podcasts, she listens every single week. And sometimes we talk about it. I think mostly she talks to my cousin about it. So... Shout out Mm -hmm. to them for being regular listeners. Yeah. I appreciate it. I would love to get some feedback on the things that my mama said and definitely let me know some things that your mom has said that was just utterly ridiculous, but it's something that she would say all the time. You can always find me on Instagram. You can always drop me an email at the Teesside podcast at gmail.com. And until next time. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Teesside Podcast. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at the Teesside Podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss any of the episodes. And be sure to tell a friend about the show. 
Until next time. <laughs>